Hi everyone, I'm Gavin Termini, I'm a product specialist with Exactor. And in this video, I'll be taking you through this edition of the Costex Coffee Break web webinars. The features we'll be looking at in this webinar will be on how the BIM schedules are used in Costex. But firstly, a reminder about Costex estimating software. Costex the product is a digital measuring and estimating application with all the features construction estimators and cost planners expect in this digital age. Features like on-screen measurement, which are live linked to workbooks with revision capabilities in BIM data extract. The interoperability of Costex with most of the common drawing file formats in the construction industry is one of Costex's dominant features. The diagram here is illustrating all the compatible drawing files and plus the exporting connection options. The features that I will be using in this recording are only available in the full version of Costex or the takeoff only version as shown in this table here. And as you can see, there are a variety of other versions available to suit your specific needs as well. So that's um, Costex and Costex takeoff. Okay, BIM schedules and Costex. Note other webinars on our website related to BIM schedules can be found in the BIM section of the webinars. Previous webinars in our product specialist blog series cover most of the common features used in this webinar. If you haven't discovered our blog posts yet, they can be found at this web address below. A previous webinar which uses the BIM schedule extensively is the one titled Adding User Defined Properties. What is the BIM schedule? It is a table of all the BIM attributes of the current visible objects in the Costex drawing view, and we'll have a look at that shortly. And then we'll also have a look at how to open up the BIM schedule. And so there's three uh, ways of doing that, and we'll go there now. Okay, I've got a 3D model open. And first of all, let's have a look at opening up the BIM schedule. And so first one is the button up in the toolbar. Click it, opens the schedule below. Click it again, closes it. Down here, ho hover over it, it even pops up with a tool hint. Click to open schedule. Click to close. Open. And when you hold down the left mouse button, you can stretch it open. Okay, so what is this BIM table? It's all the BIM attributes that are associated with all the visible objects. So currently this is the entire schedule of the entire building. So if I go into the model tree here and say isolate to ceilings, you can see here now it's isolated to the ceilings and I've got all the associated attributes associated. And as I hover over it, you can see it's highlighting the different object this row relative to all the data. I'll right click. If I um, show the object properties of that particular item, you can see here all this data here is relative to the information that's on this table. Uh, it does lay out a little bit different here compared to on the table. The table just goes with the columns alphanumeric across from left to right. Uh, the object properties get labelled out in a few different uh, sections. So this is in the hierarchy section. If I click this, it'll put it into the different groups. But all this BIM data is what is listed in this table here. Except this BIM data is only for that particular object. This is now all the objects that are displayed in the window. Okay, so in this, within this BIM table, there's a whole lot of information that we don't want to use. And when I mean by use, these tables are specifically designed to be added or used with the model maps. So let's start w working out how we can filter these. So the first thing is to understand how these columns are displayed. This little asterisk here gives you the option to turn data on and off. So if I only want to show um, certain fields here, I can go through 
and say select the data that I want. Okay, back into the table, right click, and then I can use invert column selection. So it's now highlighted the selection that I want. The other options are once, once I have selected that, I can now go through and start adding more data to it to have a look at what the information is going to give me. The other options, we can right click and go hide all columns and then start from scratch and say, OK, I'm going to want the area, family name, perimeter, structural material, and so on. And level usually gives me my zones. One thing that does happen once you start doing this filtering is it starts remembering um, that filter for you. So the next time I go back to ceilings, all that data will be there. So if I go to, say, doors, which I've been previously working on, you can see here I had this filter with the name, the height, the level, number, description, and the width. And now with that data, I can now start adding information to it. So with a, a BIM model, sometimes there's data that you need to add that's not in this list. So to do that, I can save data to Excel. When I export it out to Excel, I can then add information to it. If you're not using Excel, if you're using uh, um, open workbooks or something like that, you can uh, just copy it to the clipboard and then paste it into like your, your Google Docs spreadsheets and so on. So I'm going to save this entire sheet. I can now um, save it here and it'll open up. And there's that table with all that information. And now I can start adding column headings and data to it. And I'm going to add some data to these tables now by exporting sections at a time. First of all, I'm going to go up to the cube up here to get my plan level. In my plan level, I'm just going to minimize all my schedule here a little bit. And I'm going to start exporting one section of the building at a time and adding data to each section as I go. And so if I select here and I do show any objects in area, I can now say, OK, this is going to be my northern wing. And I can export that out. Save to Excel. I'm just going to put NW for starters. And do save. Once this Excel file opens up, it's going to add a heading here, building section. I'm going to put N tag all this data in the northern wing with NW. And save. And close. Now I'm going to zoom out again. I'm going to add uh, section here as well. So now I'm going to uh, go back to the model tree, show all the doors. And this time I'm just going to hide this section here and be able to show my northern section and my now my new western section. What to do to drawings, then I can right click and do hide show areas or hide areas. This time I'm going to hide area, and so I'm going to hide this section here. So in my building, I'm going to add that new uh, building section table there, or column there. So I'm going to go open and update. Refilters that, and we'll add all the da data back there. I'm now going to go back 
going to uh, do hide all columns and then show my new building section, my family name, height. data that I want to see but mostly I want to see this building section as I export and all this data here so I do want to make sure I get all the information okay now I've imported that new building section in I now want to export it out again with the western wing data but first we'll use another feature within our schedule in which we can now sort by column heading so if I select the column heading and I'll click it twice, now I've got all my north wing data to the top. Another feature you can do, I'll just scroll it back up, so that's all my north wing data, is you can hold the shift key down to start sorting other data too. So now to see that pointing arrows are collecting it this way. And so now I could even do that with my width as well and combine the data and so I can actually sort to an exact type all in one area. Once I've done that, now when I export to Excel, I can now save this to uh, the network uh, <laughs> north wing, west wing data and save. And now when I go into this Excel file, open out these columns, see it's now sorted into this area here. And so I now continue on and I can add my West Wing data. I'm just going to overwrite this data here to make sure this is all the same. And then I can put my West Wing data, drag it down. and save and close. Now that I've stepped that data in, I should be now now add the west wing data to it. So uh, with that visible, I'm now going to double click on it, go to my properties file here, and find that new nest wing, new north wing and west wing data. Open, update, So now I've got my west wing and north wing data added, and so on. So now all I need to do is the south wing data. So now I'll just go back to the model, select my doors to actually bring back all the information, open it out a little bit more. So now I've got all my doors and all the buildings selected. There's now only the data at the bottom here that needs information added to it. So again, I would then go through through the process, um, save the entire data out, it's still nicely sorted for me. <coughs> now I'll go north wing, west wing, south wing, data, and save. Once it's open, get to my columns that I need, scroll through it, it's still all sorted here. So again, I just overwrite the current to make sure everything is the same. So west wing data, north wing data, and then finally my south wing data. So now, I can, once this is all imported, I'll be able to use this in my model, model map that I'll show shortly. I'm just going to save it, close out of this, go back to my drawing, bring up its properties, double clicking on it, grab that new file I just created, open and update.
It's now imported all that data. I know if I go to the model tree and select that doors folder there, it'll now our node, we call them, these categories. It's saved that filter there, so now I can see that all the doors have now been tagged with a section of the building. Now, how do I use those sections? I can do this. I can now go to my dimension groups and update my model map. So let's do that. Model map. There it is there. Edit. Opens up there. It's on currently on doors. And so the data I'm going to add are, is these two levels here. So the first zone can be my levels. And then the second zone category can be the different wings. So now it'll actually be able to filter that data in my workbooks as well to those particular items. And so I'll close out of that. <coughs> and um, get back to my drawing. And now let's, I can, I might even close the schedule now for the time being and now import that model map with that and grab those the doors that I've now updated with that information. You see, and now I've got these two categories here created by those by that model map. So now in my estimate, I'll just uh, recap this to see if this data is connected to this spreadsheet. And yes, it is. So now if I go into my internal doors, you can see it's now grabbed all this data here in these internal doors. But if I now want to um, separate this into my different sections of, of the building, I can do that. And I might do that in this section here. I'm going to, uh, I'll just copy this row. Insert this row uh, by pasting it. I'm going to um, insert a row heading and I'm just going to call this my um, timber, timber doors north wing subtotal. And I'm going to delete this. Oh, Put a bit of a heading, bold, and let's say that this data is already included, and I just want to actually show or a subtotal of my single doors for the north wing. And so now when I go into my interior doors, uh, what kind are they? The M single flush interior. Uh, M single flush interior. There it is, a 61 of them, but now when I drag it across, I've now got the option to just grab my north wing data. Now I've only got 15. Now I could carry on splitting all those my subtotals up if I wanted to for my west wing and south wing. So you can see that by uh, simply filtering with your schedules, you can also add a lot more data. Okay, I might now get back to, so thank you for watching this webinar today, guys. And here's the contact information down here. If you need to get any more information on, on um, using BIM schedules in Costex.